All right, well, a little bit smaller class this morning, but we'll go ahead and get started. How was everyone's weekend? Mine was good. Good. It was good, relaxing weekend. Yeah. Had a not so relaxing weekend with a uh, due diligence period ending Saturday at five o'clock and an inspection that wasn't done until Friday. Oh. So cut it, cut it very close. We were negotiating terms until about nine o'clock Saturday night and then continued all day Sunday. So uh. fun, fun weekend. Good morning. All right. few more joining. All right. Anyone else joins? I will try to let them in. All right, so we'll share my screen, we'll get started. All right, so we are on module six. Um, so Lance, where did you start? What module did you start on? Started on 10. You started on 10. Okay, so you've got just a, just a few more to go. Uh, if, if this is your first module six, then you'll go all the way to 12 and then come back, start at one and come back up to five. That makes sense. So this is kind of, Wraps up, we'll finish module 12 right before the end of the new year. And then we'll, we'll start again fresh, uh, I think January 3rd, uh, starting it again. So this just kind of wraps around. So uh, even if you if you finish all of them and you still just want to start your Monday mornings with a little bit of uh, chatting about real estate, this is a good way to, to do that. So um, don't think that once you get done with these, you guys can't jump in them anymore. Um, obviously, it's always nice to have people that are in here talking and uh, makes my job a little bit a little bit easier. We got one more person joining in. She's joining. Good morning. Good morning. All right, people popping in. All right. So today we're talking about working with buyers and getting your offers accepted. Um, this is a big one, you know, for, for a lot of agents, you know, a big part of what you do is, is work with buyers and, and obviously if you're going to have a buyer, you got to get the, the offers accepted. And, you know, six months ago, this was one of the toughest things in real estate. You know, uh, you have a client and you're getting 20, 30 offers on, uh, on the property that you liked and you were showing like crazy and, um, we're starting to see it come back a little bit more in the buyer's favor here, um, which is going to be good, good for us. All right. Um, so we got a daily affirmation. Uh, if you guys want to, I'll say it one, one time, we'll do it all together. But um, I know my value and only work with realistic, qualified and motivated buyers and sellers, which that was always true. Um, but we'll, on the count of three, let's, let's read that together out loud. Uh, one, two, three. I know my no value, value in our own work, work with, with realistic, realistic qualified, qualified and motivated buyers, buyers and sellers. Why do you, why do you think that's important? So you don't waste your time. Absolutely. There's. There's a lot of time being being wasted, and it is easy when you think you have someone that's ready to 
buyer or sell, but they're but they're not, and we we haven't qualified them. They've they've given us cues that they're not ready. They're just they're just tire kicking, and they're not going to buy or sell for another year. And and sometimes we can get so focused on those people that are not ready and realistic that it takes us from getting other clients. Um, and that is, that is something that you guys don't don't want to do. I know it's easy if you if you feel like you have someone on the hook that you would just want to focus on that one person, but you always want to make sure that you're reaching out to and, and have as many potential clients as possible. And then the ones that are not realistic, right? And realistic meaning if you got somebody that wants a six hundred thousand dollar house, but realistically can only afford a two hundred thousand dollar house, right? You've got to you've got to figure out maybe you need to put them on the back burner for a little bit. Um, but you need realistic, qualified, and motivated sellers. All right. Uh, the steps of the buying process, uh, the consultation, the showing of homes. Um, I know most of you guys haven't done transactions yet, but have, have, have any of you guys showed any homes yet? Yes? I have. Okay, okay. Um, did those go pretty smoothly? I think they did. I did virtual first, and I thought that was actually harder than having the person there. You thought it was harder than, do, than doing it? I thought person? it was. I thought it's it was. It's a little different for sure. I was afraid I was moving too fast and maybe missing things, but I mean, it went okay. I just asked them in the end if there was something else that they wanted to go back and see again. Gotcha. Did they end up liking it or want to put an offer on it? Um. No, they don't think they like it. I'm brand new, so I've only had one closing. That's okay. That's great. That's I think I think someone a lot of other people in here would love to have a closing already. So, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, bro, as as she just mentioned, um, showings remote are, are a thing, and during COVID, that that was a huge thing. I mean, I would go to showings all the time where the clients didn't feel comfortable going, but they still needed to buy a house. And then you obviously deal with a lot of out of state um buyers and you know you should always recommend that you know you'll have people that are willing ready and able but they're out of state and they say well i won't be in i won't be in town until christmas well you you should be saying well i'm in town now well let's find some houses you like i'll go to the houses and do the showings for you and i'll facetime you from them and normally they'll say oh i had no idea you could do that and and instead of you waiting two months and then finding another agent in the meantime they see that you're working hard for them and you're driving to the houses and you're doing that. Um, it's a, it's a great way to, to build rapport and, and, and trust. Um, we're going to talk about the, the purchase agreement, um, buyer's market versus seller's market. And then obviously getting, getting your office accepted. And we kind of talk about this, this every week. Um, but you guys have, you know, a, a million different ways to, to get buyers and, you know, I, I feel like between buyers and sellers, buyers are a little bit easier to to find, right? And there's a, a ton of different ways to get them. Um, for new agents, you know, we we always post on our Facebook open houses. You know, we there's an open house in Fort Mill this weekend. Does anyone want to host it? Right. So you always you always have opportunities from um, the agents that have more listings to to do that. If you stay stay on top of the Facebook message board, and if you see something reach out and say, hey, I'd, I'd like to do it. And sometimes you, it's okay to have two or three agents at those. Um, but that is a, one of the best way for new agents to get clients right away is, is an open house. So um, don't, don't hesitate to ask another agent. Say, hey, look, I, I see you, spoke, you posted you had a new listing. Do you mind if I host an open house for you? Um, when people approach me for that, I'm like, absolutely. Because I don't, I don't want to do it. If you want it, absolutely. It's a good way for you to, to, to build your business. And I, you know, most people that come into open houses don't have agents, right? Um, so that's, that's a great way to do it. So um, obviously referrals, you guys should be posting on your social media. You should be reaching out to your friends and family. Um, all these different ways. We won't, we won't go into this. We've been kind of talking about this, but um, door knocking, um, you know, we saw that that, that worked. Um, obviously networking, social media is a great way, mailers, um, your circle of influence and the, the internet. So the, the, the buyers are just, it, it's, they're, they're everywhere, right? Um, so you guys should be almost weekly finding a new potential buyer between all the stuff that you guys are doing, um, even if they're not willing and ready right now, but that you can add into your CRM and 
drip drip campaign them right to keep them keep them motivated so uh, a lot of different ways to to find buyers just just make sure you guys are constantly reaching out all these different ways to to get them but um every one of you guys should should be trying i would i would make a goal if you haven't done an open house by the end of the year try to find a listing that, that an agent's got and, and do an open house um if you and if you don't feel comfortable doing it on your own maybe the person listing it will, will join God, look at this. Look at this image. Um, the buyer process. It is a uh, it's a lot, right? It is not it is not just I have a buyer. We have a house. We close. Right. There's 14 steps on here. It, it goes on and on and on. Right. Um, there's a there's a lot. I always say getting the clients the easy part, getting them to like a house is the easy part getting to the escrow processes is, is a lot um, and getting them approved on their mortgage and, and keeping that on the, the tracks is a lot. So, um, you know, you guys are, you guys are right here on, uh, you guys are on, on number one. So, you know, get, get a lot of number ones, right. And then start working people through your pipelines, right. That's, uh, that's, that's key. Um, and we'll go through, through each, each one of these as we talk today. Um, Pre-qualify, um, and not not necessarily just on the mortgage side. Just as we go through this, you know, are are all parties strongly motivated? Um, and that goes on the buying and selling side. Um, you might have the wife that wants to move and not the husband. Um, I took a listing in Salisbury about a month ago. Walked in, crushed it, signed all the paperwork. Three hundred thousand dollar listing. The house would sell in a day. And got back to the house and the wife called and said, I'm not, I don't, I don't want to sell. I'm sorry. My, my husband's the one that wants to sell. I don't, I really don't want to sell. So never got to go live on that listing, right? Um, not all parties were strongly motivated, right? Um, so ask yourself before you get into it, you know, do, does everyone here want to move, right? Um, you know, do they have kids? Are they, are they in school? Can they, can they move in the same area? Can they move farther away? Um, how long have they been looking? Um, are they able to move, right? Can they, can they move right now? Um, you'll have a lease, you know, if, if someone's renting a house and they decide a new lease and they, they're stuck in it for 12 months, um, you know, unless they're willing to break their lease, you know, that can be a little bit tough. Um, if you're in the final few months, you know, a, a lot of times it is, it is good for them to go and start that process while they still have a few months left on the lease because as you just saw on here, there's a lot of steps, right? So just because you start seeing houses and um, doesn't mean that you're going to close tomorrow, right? I mean, the process is, it's, it's, a, it's a, almost a minimum 30-day process re regardless, unless your buyer is paying with cash. With, uh, but if they're paying with cash, they're probably not renting right now, right? Um, and are they willing? Um, do they have the, the, the credit uh, to, to buy? Um, or have they just got a divorce? Um, do they have uh, a job longer than 12 months? Do they have the income to buy the house? So, so a lot of different ways. So, I mean, it, that's, that's the thing. I mean, you could have five buyers and each one of your potential buyers be missing one of these stages, right? So, and you have to work with those buyers to, to get them all to a point where they're ready to start showing houses and, and get under contract, right? Um, so. That that's a that's the biggest thing for for new agents is you 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 need a pipeline right you don't just need one potential buyer you need you need you need to stack them up. Um, this is a new buyer questionnaire. Um, what is your what is your must must have list? Um, what do you what's an absolute no for you? If this house doesn't have this, what what's it going to be? Um, I showed a house in in Hickory. Drove an hour and 10 minutes there. Um, the house kind of had a garage, but it, it wasn't really a garage. It was more like a workshop. And I told him that before we went out there. We get out there. We spent an hour at the showing. And I didn't get home Saturday till like almost 7 o'clock at night. And they said, yeah, we need a, a two-car garage. I was like, I know. 
talked about that before we went out there, but I just wasted my own. I didn't say I wasted my day, obviously, but it's just one of those things. Like, I know you need a two car garage. So like, let's not waste our time. This, no, no, we, we like this. If you like it enough, we'll buy it. And then they loved it. They had the three kids there and it was pouring rain. And it's, it's, that's one of their, their must haves. Right. So I, you know, I'm, I'm guilty of, of not following my own advice sometimes. I mean, I should have, you know, should have uh, pointed them in a different direction, but they were very adamant about wanting to see it, um, get their, get their financing stuff. Right. Um, the, the great thing about buyers is it, it puts you, it puts you in a position where you look like the expert, right? Um, and I know a lot of you guys have probably already met with some of our, our people, our, our lenders that we work with. Um, if you haven't, uh, let me know, I'll, I'll contact you, but, um, Garrett with movement mortgage is really good. Um, if you have a buyer that hasn't started the lending process, like, look, I've got somebody, he's fantastic. He, he does a lot of um, our, our company's uh, loans. Like, I'm happy to send them to you and he can get you pre-approved, right? Um, now, you look like the expert because you're helping them get it approved. And obviously, they get approved with someone that we work with. They're going to use you, right? Um, theoretically. Um, so, yeah, make, make sure that they've, they've either done that process on their own and, on, and it's probably 50, 50, right? 50% of people like they've already, yeah, but I went to my bank, I'm pre-approved and the other 50% are, I have no idea how to start. And that's when you kind of want to start recommending your, your network of people. Um, you definitely want to have a pre-approved letter. Um, these people, I did have them pre-approved before we started showing a dozen houses, which we have seen, uh, but they do have a pre-approval letter. So they are, willing and able to, to buy, and they, they do need to buy. Um, price range and budget, and we'll get into that a little bit as well. Did you raise your hand there? No, okay. Um, why do you think it's important to know if they currently own or rent? Don, you, you, wanna, you wanna chime in here? Uh, for for the current home. Yeah, why do you why do you think it's important to know whether they they currently own the house that they have or the they're renting right now? Uh, uh, renting. Right. Is it the so they're they're looking for a new house? Where they're at right now? Why would we want to know if they currently own that house or they're renting that house? It could be contingent on whether or not they can buy the house that they want currently oh yeah so you gotta you gotta figure out if they they own a house uh let's sell that house right um and you want to be the one to sell that and, and you see the next step would you like a free home evaluation on your current property right like um let's go ahead and if you're if you're ready to start looking to buy we need to have your house on the market right um and then if they're renting right how how long is your lease uh, if it's down to the last couple months, then yeah, let's let's move forward and and go that way. But yeah, they own a ha house. You know, a lot of people don't even think about it. Well, I need to have my house sold. Yes, I, I mean I've literally met buyers at a property and they said they have a house to sell, and I've driven right to their house and <laughs> done the valuation and listed them their house as well. Um, so yeah, make sure that you're getting both sides of that business. First step is the loan approval. So again, you, you want to make sure that they are approved and they can afford a house. Um, but you also want to have their, their, their price range, right? Um, and, and timing. Um, so you might have somebody that they won't be in their job for 12 months until December. Um, so maybe, you know, maybe you can wait a few weeks to put in offers or make sure that closing is well after December. So um, the, the loan can go through. Um, and then the, the price range is very important too, right? If you've got somebody that's, that's pre-qualified for $250,000 um, and you guys are letting them ask you to see houses at $300,000, um, you know, you're kind of wasting everyone's time and you're, you're not setting the right expectations. So, you know, it is... 
it, it's still a seller's market. So, you know, if you got a house that's 300,000, they're, you think they're going to come down 50 grand in this market, right? You need to be looking at houses probably 325 to 350. So if there are multiple offers, you guys can go up a little bit um, and still, still be in the range. So it is, it is very important to not, not be showing them houses that they can't, they can't afford. Right. It's just like, if you go to, to look at, cars and you you you're not going to go test drive the corvette right because you, you you're probably not going to afford that that car um you want to drive whatever one of chevy's cars are right like you want to you want to drive what's in your what's in your price range and it's the same it's the same thing with houses um not that you guys can't afford corvettes um but you know what i'm saying like you want to look at what what you can afford Why meet in your office? Obviously, it's safe. Uh, it's very professional, and it it it's you you control the situation. Um, I'm willing to meet anywhere. Honestly, I'll meet them at their current apartment, their current house, Starbucks. I don't care uh, if if they're if they're looking to buy. I will meet them absolutely anywhere. Um, so yeah, if you can get them to the office, that's that's great. If this buyer is in Gastonia. And lives in Gastonia and wants to buy in Gastonia. They're probably not going to drive to the Charlotte office just so you can show them houses in Gastonia, right? Um, so yeah, say hey, look, I'm happy to come out where you're at right now. Give me your address. I'll, I'll be happy to show up. Um, if not, you know, there's a there's a coffee shop off of Cox Road, exit you know 21. I'll be happy to meet you there. Um, so find a find a common ground if they don't want to show their actual place. But most people are okay with you coming to their home. Um, but set set that set that up. Uh, you're gonna have a lot more luck in person. Um, obviously, you're gonna have conversations with these people over the phone. But the the more you can get in front of them and eye to eye, the the more chances you're gonna have them of signing your paperwork. Well, we're gonna go through all of these. Um, but it, the one the one that you want to really make sure that you're doing is securing that buyer loyalty agreement. Uh, Rodney, what do you, what is that? What is that? Uh, what does that mean? The buyer loyalty agreement. Thank you. I'm mute, but um, that's the that's the buyer's agency agreement, right? That's 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 the agreement that they're going to use you as as their agent, right? So when you're working with these buyers, you need to have them sign two. Two things if you're going to actually be the client, the the work with real estate agents, right? You need you need to pretty much always try to get that signed. And then if the, if you're going to be their agent, they need to sign the buyer's agency agreement. So there's two forms that you're going to want to have these people sign. Um, and usually once I meet them in person or I have a, a showing or two under my belt with them, I'm I'm going to ask them to go ahead and sign that. Um Brian. Yes. Okay. In uh, your ex from your experience, when usually do you I, I know you kind of like have to give them uh, on your on substantial like kind of like information that when they give them uh, give it to you. But um, um, usually, I know people uh, seem not like you know uh, comfortable to sign everything on your first uh, when you first meet them. So, from your experience, when usually they sign these two forms. It, it depends and it, it depends on where you where you got that lead from um you know if it's a if it's a referral um you know that one's that's that's usually pretty easy they're usually we now have them sign on the first time um if it's somebody that i've never met before or um a social media lead or something like that uh sometimes it might it might be a time or two um but i'm pretty much always going to get their their email address and, and at least send it to them after our first visit and then they haven't signed it by the second or third visit that I'm going to, I'm going to have my iPad with me and, and have them sign it. Um, Both forms were, were only working with the real estate agent for. Yeah. I mean, you, you, you pretty much need to tell them that I need to, I need to have you sign this form just to, just so you know that I'm a real estate agent and it's kind of what, what my company offers. So I, I kind of have to show you that cause I'm showing you houses. Um, and then usually I'll, I'll put the buyer's agency agreement in there as well. Um, and then they have any questions with me, either they won't sign it or they'll, they'll call and ask me, um, okay. or, or they'll stop me from signing. But yeah, I mean, that 
I know it sucks asking for the paperwork to be signed and sometimes you're going to maybe hear no. Um, but for the most part, I mean, even when I'm just, just showing house with somebody I never met, like I'm getting to know them, I'm asking about their kids, like I'm finding about like just, just their life and just, just really bonding with them. So by the time like we're done with the showing, we're, we're back to sitting out by the car, you know, I've got my iPad out and I'm just like, hey, like this is some documents I need to, need to do when you want to see some more houses and you're just kind of setting those next steps. And then I just go ahead and have the paperwork pulled up and just have them have them sign. Um, it's kind of how the, the the way that I do it. Um, mm -hmm. But you're also going to have times that you meet with a potential buyer and they they love the house, you know, first or second showing that you send them. Um, in that case, I'm going to send them the offer to purchase. I'm going to send them the disclosures to sign. I'm going to send them the work on real estate agent, lead based paint, and the buyer's agent agreement all in one package. Mm -hmm. um, so you'll have that happen a lot as well. Um, because if they're if they're going to put in an offer, right? They've they've got to sign those other things, right? Um, yeah, so they have to be before they you send an offer, right? Yeah. So I mean, a lot of times, I mean, and I've done that numerous times. Is is you know, I didn't have the buyer's agent agreement signed, and they're like, all right, well, we like this house, we put an offer. All right, great. Uh, I'll send over the offer shortly, and I just send over all the documents at once, um, and they will sign it. So. Um, you should you, you shouldn't have an issue with, with that, but um, sometimes on that first contact, it can be a, a little tricky, uh, especially if you're just meeting them for the first time and just showed one quick house. Um, it, it can be a little a little bit tricky, but um, you know it, it's always good to follow up with an evening. Like, hey, I know that house didn't work out. It's good to know kind of what you like. Um, let me know when you can see some more houses this weekend. And by the way, I'm going to email you some documents just so you know um, that I'm a realtor. And let me know if you have any questions with it. I have a question, Brian. Yeah. Would the process work the same if someone wants to buy mobile homes? Yes. Okay, thank you. So, I mean, mobile homes can be can be a little bit different. Um, and I sell a lot of mobile homes. Um, I had an offer on a mobile home last week. Um, yeah, the, the lending can be a little bit different. Um, not all mobile homes are going to be FHA um on the on the paperwork on the offer to purchase there's a, a a section on the very first page you have to mark that this is a mobile home that's coming with the property um but no i mean uh for the most part as long as it's a double wide um it can be okay. it can be finance um kind of as a rule of thumb that if it if it's a single wide trailer it kind of needs to be cash okay um, there, there's a few situations where single wide can can be finance, but very, very, very rarely. So um, I sold a, a single wide trailer in Stanley, Shelby, somewhere out, somewhere out that way. Um, and it was one hundred thirty five thousand, and I just, I just put cash on me, right? So in a proposed financing, instead of putting cash, MHA conventional, it was just cash, and the private notes it said cash on me, um, and it sold, and it sold in, in one day on the market. So. Um, but that house would not go to financing. So when you have, and, and that's a great question you ask is, is I often have times when people send me 10 properties and one or two of them is a, is a single wide. And I know that they, they don't have the funds to buy cash. I just let them know like, Hey, this is, this is not something we can go see. Um, so you just have to be, be careful what your, your people are, are wanting to see and, um, make sure that their finance financing will cover anything that they, that you're going out to. Okay, thank you. Of course. So title, so this one right here, title issues, uh, is something that pops up on on mobile homes uh, sometimes because mobile homes, their their title is is often at the DMV, like a like a car, right? Um, have you guys ever been to the DMV before? <laughs> not uh, not always easy to get <laughs> stuff. So I've had I've had things you know hang up. Uh, if, if that if that title wasn't transferred correctly from the previous owner uh, to this one, you know that that process can be uh, a lot of fun on mobile homes, and I've dealt with that probably seven or eight times this year, <laughs> having to get a hold of the DMV. Um, yeah. Right. Yes. Can you hear me now? <laughs> oh yes, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think my headphone has a, some problem earlier. Okay, uh, no I, I have a quick question about that you mentioned earlier uh, about signing um buyer agency agreement on mm -hmm. your iPad. 
So my question is, which is like more convenient, like with iPad or electric like device or just physical paper? Um, that's definitely a preference thing. Um, you know, I'm I'm a technology guy, so I I I'm completely paperless now. When I when I first started, probably my first hundred listings were were pen and pad, and it was you know. 40 something pages of printed out paperwork when you count all the MLS stuff for North Carolina, South Carolina it was like 30 something. And I had stacks of paper like this in my car at all times. So I would took, you know, I'd go out and take you know, three, four, five listings a week. And it was just, it was just paperwork central. I got so burnt out on that. And now that everything is so easy to be electronic, um, I like electronic. However, you're going to have, especially older uh, clients that are a little sketched out by, by electronics. Uh, so I typically will carry um, a, a, a full pack of, of printed out stuff highlighted where it needs to be signed so I don't miss it. So the client doesn't miss anything um, just, just in case. Um, but I, ideally ideally for you, it, it, electronics is going to be easier because it, it, it's easier to keep up with. Um, it's cleaner, it's neater. Um, and if you have somebody that, that doesn't want to do electronic stuff, Guess what you have to do every single time? There's a change to the paperwork or uh, an offer, a counter offer. You have to go out there, so it do, it does allow you to um, do a lot more transactions than if you're having to go back out to the same client ten times to have them initial something or something like that. But uh, long story short, if you can if you can do electronic, that is that is the way to go. And you don't have to have an iPad. That's just my that's just my choice. Um, I've carried a PC in numerous times because, again, all the electronic stuff, is, I mean, you can use a, a, the mouse, right? So you don't have to, like, touch it with your finger necessarily. Um, I have it set up where I just hand on my, my Apple Pencil, um, and I just have them click the sign. Um, but that's just my setup. You, you don't have to have an iPad necessarily, but uh, any, any laptop will do fine as well. Yeah, thank you. Of course. So, so these are just you should be letting them know that that you're going to help them negotiate the best possible price and terms. You're going to you know try to protect them. Uh, you're going to advocate for them, um, and you're going to hold their hand through the paperwork and make sure that they get to the closing table and, and buy the house. Um, so yeah, you just want to let them know that you're going to that you're going to work hard for them, and you're not just going to disappear the second that they put an offer in, um, because that's when they really need you the most. Um, as you guys will. We'll find out. Abby, you said you, you've done a transaction. Was it on the, the buying or the selling side? She's muted. That's okay. Um, so this is two of the reasons why you want to make sure that you're getting that buyer's agency agreement signed. Um, increase your odds of getting paid for all your work. Um, and, and loyalty is a, a two-way street, right? Like you're being very loyal to them and giving them a lot of your undivided attention. You know, you you want that back. So I I never feel bad about asking someone to sign that. Um, but you you will see, and I'm sure you've already heard horror stories. I've probably told you horror stories of, you know, showing somebody 20 or 30 uh, houses and then they buy a house with somebody else. Um, it, it happens it happens all the time. So um the more often you can get that buyer agency agreement signed, the, the more often you're going to get paid. It's, it's pretty, pretty simple. Leslie, you with us? Yes, I am. Yeah, you want to you want to read this? I'll let you read this on the screen. Can you see it? Uh, you'll have to let me pull over. <laughs> oh, no, you're, you're good. I'll, I'll read that into your driving. Um, right. Let's move to the paperwork that allows me to represent you. I will give you an overview of each section. It's actually pretty straightforward. If you have any questions, let me know. A explaining the paperwork is, is, is super easy and straightforward, right? And the, the, the beauty of working with buyers is the buyers aren't the ones that pay the commission, right? There's, there's no reason that any buyer would not be represented ever it costs them nothing right um so understand that like listen you signing with me doesn't mean that you're paying me money the the seller whoever house that, that you decide to buy i'm going to help you with that they're the ones that pay me right 
but you want me to advocate for you and, and guide you through this process. Um, so at the end of the day, that's that's all this is, is them trusting you to get them through the process. So that the paperwork is super, super, super easy. And when you explain that they're not the ones that pay, a lot of times they have no idea about that, right? So when they see that paperwork, like, oh crap, like I owe this person money, right? Let them know that that's, that's not the case, right? Showing appointments, uh, set, set the expectations up front, review the process, communicate, communicate, communicate. Um, Brian, yeah. I have a question. Yeah. So on that aspect of that, we're going to tell a buyer that's comforting to them that they don't have to pay our commission. On the other end of that, how do you approach that situation with a seller um, to get them to overcome? OK, like I might have to now pay six percent for this person and get them to nudge to. To want to buy if, it, if they're not like needing to move for work or something like that. Right. Well, I mean, I'm saying, a if they're if they're selling, they're, they're probably having a profit, right? Um, and that that's just kind of the process works. So whenever the good news is, whenever you sell, you know, in North Carolina, you the seller pays a commission, the buyer pays closing costs, right? Yes. You're not going to have to pay for the attorney and all that stuff. And guess what? When you get ready to buy, now you don't have to pay the commissions, right? So it it, it all comes it all comes around. Um, so yeah, most most sellers know that they're they're gonna pay the commissions. Um, sometimes they think they only pay half, and the buyer pays half. Um, that's that's just how I, I always explain it. It's like, look, North Carolina seller pays commission, buyer pays closing costs, the attorneys, and all that good stuff. Um, so it, it 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 works out. And then whenever whenever I help you find a house, you're not gonna have to pay those commissions. Um, okay. That that's how I explain it. And I I never never really get any any feedback from that or or kickback from that. Sounds good. Showings. So set up automated MLS searches. Um, no more than six homes per appointment. Um, a, a good thing for you guys to do if, once you get a potential buyer is post on social media. And, and I don't know if this is in there for this reason, but um, this will help you get more leads, right? So um, I've got a client that I was supposed to meet in Salisbury. As soon as we get off here, they called me at 7 a.m. <laughs> twice uh, to cancel. Um, the, the mother is sick, so I'm having to cancel a couple of showings today, uh, which I want to make sure uh, that, you, that I'm going to go in and, and cancel those so those, the homeowners aren't leaving their house um, for, for no reason, because that, that would be rude. Um, but they sent me probably 15 homes. And I'm not going to show them 15 homes in a day. Um, so this this kind of says uh, don't show more than six. Uh, normally two or three is kind of what I'll what I'll do. Um, but when you have a a buyer that that that's ready to buy, post on social media say, hey, I've got a buyer looking to find a house in Salisbury. They're looking in the 250 to 300 range, three bedroom, two bathroom. Let me know if you have anything. Um, the feedback you'll get from that is is a other agents that have listings, but b you'll get other buyers that will reach out to you, right? So, majority of your friends and family don't know that you do social that you do real estate even if you've posted it before you know they might not have seen your previous post so they might not think of you as the go-to agent right um constantly post that stuff right if i go to a showing all the time i'm taking a picture of the outside i'll make a little tiktok or a little little video and i'll post it on my my social media and then almost probably every other time i have someone hit me up like oh yeah like i'm actually looking to buy or sell right it is a it is a great great tool, um, so social media should should definitely be your friend. Showings, call ahead. Um, you're not always gonna call ahead. Um, I do I do normally talk to the agent if I know my my buyers really really wants that house. Uh, I will call ahead and talk to the agent and ask them if they have any offers, what's important in an offer, um, and make sure they haven't accepted something. Because there are times that you will schedule a showing and drive 40 minutes out there and the agents say, yeah, we accepted something yesterday. I just haven't changed it in MLS. So um, that, that can be frustrating. So um, 
Yeah, if that's the only showing that you're going to for that day, like it doesn't hurt to call that agent head and say, hey, like my buyers are super interested. Anything I should know about it specifically? And do you have any offers? Um, ring and knock, announce yourself. Um, yeah, you should you should do this. I normally do it just just to make sure that someone's not in the house running around naked or just you know just not expecting us. Um, one thing I would tell you, uh, the ring and knock, um, I understand that almost every house has cameras in these days, right? Um, make sure that, especially especially on the outside, almost every home has a ring doorbell or a camera up in the corner. Um, I say that because don't don't be showing up and, and having them talk crap on the outside because they'll do that. And you shouldn't be saying negative stuff about the house because these, these people will watch you, right? Um, I've seen people get in trouble for that before. When you go in the house, people have cameras sometimes. So like, you know, don't, don't be doing anything you shouldn't be doing, right? So just just always, always be be cautious of that. Um, yeah, just be be smart. Always leave a business card. Um, that is super, super helpful. Uh, return the house the way you found it. Um, <clears throat> In the case of Saturday, when I had that showing and they brought their three kids and they were tearing the house up, I was like, you guys got to get the kids out. Like, I got to fix this house and clean it up because it's it, we let, we're, we were going to leave it in worse shape than we found it. And that is that is not good. Um, make sure that you lock all the doors back. Um, this happened to me a couple of weeks ago. I don't know how I did it, but I left the back door on unlocked. Um, I, I think cracked. And this was up in Hickory. And I got back to Charlotte and the agent called and said, hey, like my sellers have a camera and I can see the back door is open. Oh my gosh, I'm an hour away now. Uh, so I had to call another agent up there to run up there. Those are just little things. Um, this has happened to me before. So I'm just telling you all the stupid stuff that I've done. Don't lock the key in the house. That is, it, 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 it will happen to probably all of you at some point. Um, it happened to, to me. Thankfully, I had my keys and my phone on the outside. Um, yeah, I, as, as a rule of thumb, so since I've done that, and that's, I don't know how long ago that was, probably a year, I always put the, the keys in my pocket and I, I make sure I don't touch them until, because it's so easy to put them on the counter while you're talking and you got your iPad out and you're talking about stuff make sure that you always keep those keys in your in your pocket and then double check before you're closing that lock back lock box back open that you have all your stuff out too um especially if it's like a super or something because it might you might not get access again um then you have to reschedule the appointment and stuff um yeah little little lessons learned by stupid mistakes that i've made do not um accompany buyer in every room um I, I like to walk through the house with them and show them the room um, and, and see what they like and don't like about it. Um, that that's You don't have to like be standing over top of them. Um, and there are times I'll let them, you know, obviously go and explore. But I do normally kind of show them pretty much every room. Um, but that's that's up to that's up to you guys. Um, state the obvious. Obviously, you don't want to be disagreeing with them. Um, skip a home. Um, yeah, those are. Just, I mean, obviously disagreeing with them and defending a property is, is not ideal, but um, coming into every room, every one of you guys is going to have a different a different process. I, I normally try to get there before them, go in, turn the lights on, do a quick walkthrough um, so I know the house layout a little bit uh, because I understand your, the, your potential buyers are going to expect that you know every, is this, the, is this the primary? And you're like, I don't, we just got, we got here at the same time, right? Uh, you're going to get that a lot. They're going to ask you questions, right? So if you can get there a few minutes early and do a quick walkthrough so you know a little bit about it, um, it is it is super helpful. Uh, each property, um, try to try to figure out what exactly they're looking for. Um, and you know, you you do have to sometimes not sell them the homes, but ask them ask them if this could be the home. Because there are some people that will literally just keep looking at houses forever. Um, so you need to you need to be asking them questions like, will this house work for you? Could you see your kids 
being in these two rooms, it's nice Jack and Jill. Like, could you, would this work for them? Right. Would your furniture work over here? Like I'm, I'm painting a picture of like, does, would this work in real life for you? Right. And sometimes if you're not asking that, they would just go to showing after showing after showing, and you guys would just be driving to showing after showing. So, you know, you want to, you want to make sure that you're looking at houses that they like. And if it is a house they like, you can tell when the husband and wife are like, oh, this is good. We like it. You can tell by their body language, like ask them, ask them those, those buying questions. Exactly what I was just saying. Um, and yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't hurt to ask what they want to put an offer on it. Right. Um, you, you do have to, you do have to sell the, sell the property, even though it's not your listing. Um, again, if they don't like it, you know, you don't want to be pushing stuff on them that they don't like. Um, that is, that is rude. And they, These are things that are always going to happen. Um, you're going to have people that that maybe they only wanted two bedrooms to start with, but now they need three bedrooms. Um, maybe the their credit has changed. <clears throat> What's happened a lot lately is I've had agents or uh, clients that have been approved for say 250 rates go up, and now they can wait for 230, right? So now you kind of have to re readjust everything, right? So those those things are going to happen. Um, you just kind of have to reevaluate the houses that you're looking at and and explain to them like well this is this is what we can afford now or if you want to go up to three bedroom we're going to have to look at a bigger bigger price range key areas of the offer Nisha let's loans FHA VA conventional what what are the differences there and what do you what, what's the most lucrative I mean, what, I mean what's the most attractive when those types of loans conventional mm -hmm. what's next va and fha for me <laughs> i would right. say yeah i mean kind of kind of i mean obviously besides cash you know the the next thing that most people want to see is conventional and then i think behind that is fha and then then after fha you have you know va and usda um if your if your client's FHA, it's normally a lot of times it's because of the down payment, right? Because FHA you can have uh, a lot smaller down payment, a lot of times only like three, three and a half percent, um, which is not a bad thing. But understand that that conventional loans, the inspection process and the the appraisal process is easier. Um, whereas FHA, the the inspections are going to be a lot more strict. The appraisal is going to be a little bit stricter. Um, so. Yeah, if you have somebody that can they can go conventional, you know, that when you when you send an offer to somebody and they have five offers and yours is FHA at the same price as someone that's conventional, you know, they're they're probably gonna choose conventional, right? Um, if you have somebody that can only do FHA, that's fine. And that, that's how my client is, and I'm showing houses at Hickory. Um, but A, I'm making sure that the houses I show them will accept FHA, because not everyone will. Um, so that's, that's important. Inspections, repairs, um, disclosures. Um, those are all things that are super important to, to the offer. Um, and we'll get into that a little bit. Um, yeah. So when you're putting an offer, I mean, you obviously want to put a price that's going to get accepted, um, but there's also there's also some terms. Lance, what what are what terms in a, in a, will make a contract better or worse? So yeah, besides besides the price, what else what else is is important in an offer? Well, if you're representing the buyer, um, what would be more important for the seller to see is that there's no contingency. Um, yeah. uh, also, you know. A, a seller is going to look more favorable to a 
uh, an offer to buy if they're uh, not asking for uh, buyer concessions. Okay, so that's that's, that's two. We'll let, we'll let someone else take some. You got you got two good ones. So um, no contingencies and no no seller credit. Um, who who else has something else that's important in in an offer that would make it a seller? And one no two? inspection. <laughs> No inspection. Okay. Okay. Well, that a lot of, I mean, close. Say again, how fast they can close, how fast they can close. Right. So that that's another one. There's, there's, there's one other one that's super important as well. Is that interest rate? Yeah. The, the, the type of loan and the, the, the rates that they have. Um, there's, there's one more that's a, it, it goes along with how fast they can close. Clear title due diligence period oh. a due diligence period is what separates a lot of a lot of offers right um if you've got three offers and they're all the same price and three of, and the two of them have a 21 day due diligence period the other one has a 10 day you're you're going to take that 10 day due diligence period right as as a seller because that means you know after 10 days that it's a done deal that it's going through right um so that due diligence period and that that the settlement date, which is the day that it closes, are are super important, right? No, no contingencies is is super important. Um, seller concessions or or seller credit um, is is important. Um, it's not a deal killer, um, but it is it it is important. And then what what type of financing is it? So those are all things that when you're writing up an offer, understand that the seller is going to see all those things and determine that they want your offer based, based on all that stuff. Um, especially when there's a lot of offers, the more, the more stuff that you have in there, the less likely they're going to, to accept. Right. Uh, but there's also times that you, you have to do certain things, right? I mean, if it's super busy and, you know, inspections are two weeks out and you need uh, 15 to 20 day uh, due diligence period, sometimes it, it is what it is. Um, but just know it might be a little bit harder to, to get that house. Um, and then, you know, if you're, if your buyer's main objective is to low ball them on price, understand that if they get accepted, that the seller's probably not going to be as willing to help them with repairs versus if you gave them a full price offer over asking. Right. Um, so those are things that you guys have to really, really guide their expectations on. Um, if you're trying to get a low, low ball price and you're trying to get everything in the house fixed from the inspection report, at some point that seller is going to stop bending, right? Any questions about that? That makes sense. All right. The buyer cover letter. Yeah. So we really can't do this anymore. Um, so this, this, this top part, um, this is what, what we kind of call like a love letter. Um, the client has, they have a small family and they love the house and blah, blah, blah. You, you, you really don't want, you really don't want to send that anymore. Um, it, you're, you're, you're not supposed to, um, it, it's, it's a way of, of people picking offers over other offers based on your family or your religion or any of that stuff. So you don't you don't want to be really putting this in 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 a letter with your offer. But this but this part you do that this part down here. I've broken down the key parts of the offer for you, right? You're going to attach the offer, obviously the the, the offer to purchase. Uh, but it's nice when I when I get an offer on one of my properties and they they've done all this stuff. It's super nice, right? It, it's it's helpful. I know that agent knows what they're doing. And I'm probably gonna call them right away. Thank you so much for doing that. Like I received your offer. Like let me let me go talk to my client, right? Um, so the purchase price, um, the down payment, what type of financing, the close date, um, who the attorney is, um, having all that stuff in there is is super super nice. Um, again, you don't you don't have to do all this. Um, you can just you know attach the offer and say here's my offer to purchase, right? what do you think looks better? Right. And, it, and especially when you have a market, like, like we've had, um, and it's kind of slowly changing, but 
understand that they, these agents have a, a big part of who what deal they pick what what buyer they they work with right um so i understand that you what's the old saying you collect more bees with honey is that a saying i feel like that's the saying you guys know what i'm trying to say Attract more bees with honey yeah yeah that's the saying right i'm not i'm not crazy right um but that but that's the thing i i find that like when i'm putting an offer i'm gonna call the agent say hey what's going on like let's do this let's 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 get this under contract we'll celebrate with champagne after we close like you know i'm like getting them to to like me and want to work with me because it, it, it's they're more likely going to want to accept my offer um Call, email, text, um, use their TC. Does everybody know what a TC is? No. It's your transaction coordinator. Um, so a lot of a lot of agents have a transaction coordinator, right? So for you guys in the beginning, definitely in the beginning, you guys on the listing side of things, you guys are gonna be handling your your transaction, right? You're gonna be the one communicating with the um the attorney, you're gonna be communicating with let's for the inspections, for the, the buyer agent. Um, you guys need to learn that whole process, right? Um, and even on the even on the buying side, you can have a transaction coordinator. Um, you guys need to learn that whole process because you need to know how it works. Uh, but eventually, you know, hopefully you guys are so busy that you don't have time to do that miscellaneous stuff, and you can pass that on and and pay a transaction coordinator to, to handle that stuff for you. But um, once you get under contract, they will literally they'll normally say, "Hey, this is." Joanne, she's my transaction coordinator. Please make sure that you include her on all emails and she will be handling the process, right? Um, you have to communicate with the listing agent. I've literally seen people get under contract and they try, they, they don't talk to the other agent until the week of close. And then they come to find out, oh yeah, the, the seller has to delay two weeks. Well, you should have known that because you should have been communicating with them. This There should not be a week that goes by in a transaction that you not you don't talk to the other side of it. Right, what whether you're on the listing side or the buying side, um, you've got to communicate with that other agent to make sure that the train is still on the tracks and that that you know of the problems before they arise. Because when things just pop up out of the blue, now you you look bad in front of your client because you didn't know that the buyer, or the seller, was having issues buying a house, for example. Right, so you gotta you gotta you gotta do that. Difficult agency. Not everyone is easy to, to work with. Um, at the end of the day, you, you guys have the same goal, right? You want to get it to closing. Um, some some agents have big egos and, and they're going to not talk politely to you. Um, it, it, it kind of the same thing again. You, you, you get more bees with honey um trying to get into head-to-head -head match with another agent is is not normally going to end well and is a, a, a much bigger chance of that deal falling out of contract right um so there's a lot of times you you do have to bite your tongue um but at the same time there are times where you have to put your foot down and, and let that other agent know hey this is how things are going to go whether you like it or not um so you know i don't i don't want you guys going out there getting ran over either right um but some agents are just not professional and text you late or don't respond for a day. Um, you know, you just you just have to you just have to deal with it. If you ever have a question about how another agent is treating you, talk to your bank, right? Um, don't 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 just sit on it. Just reach out to Andrea, reach out to, to somebody, and just say, hey, look, this 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 agent is behaving like this. What what do you recommend I do? Right? Um, don't just don't just handle it on your own because you don't want to get yourself in trouble, right? Um, I understand that everything that you email and text is is permanent, right? So if you're ready, you get in a heated battle with another agent, do not fire off that text after two glasses of wine saying what you want to say, right? Because then believe me, that will be screenshotted and that will go to the commission. Um, believe me, bite your bite your tongues. And these are things you have to ask yourself: Do I want to get paid? <laughs> <laughs> or do I want to curse this agent out? Uh, don't don't do the second one. Um,
So this is understanding what, what kind of market you're in. Um, and so when it says one to five months, six months and seven to 12 months, that's, that's inventory, right? So when there's one to five months worth of inventory only of houses available, that is a seller's market. Um, when there's six months, that's what's kind of considered as a, as a balanced market, right? It's kind of balanced for the buyers and the sellers. And then when you have enough houses of inventory that's seven to 12 months, that's a buyer's market, right? So now the buyers have more control. The buyers can ask for more stuff. Um, We've been heavily, heavily in a seller's market the last two years. I mean, it has been, the sellers have, have the control. Um, we are getting much, much closer, if not already to a balanced market. Um, so that's, that's kind of where we're at now. We're, you know, before you guys were probably seeing houses go on the market and under contract in 24, 48 hours, right? Uh, now you're seeing a lot of, one week, two weeks, three weeks. Uh, so they're, they're starting to settle, sit a little bit, right? So the buyers are getting a little bit more um, negotiating power, right? So they can ask for a little bit more. So um, know your know your market. Um, you should always be on the, the MLS every morning, seeing how many new, new houses are coming on the market. Um, what are the average days that they're going under contract? Uh, you guys should be, be paying attention to that. Presenting the offer. That's already 10 o'clock, good gracious. Sorry guys, we'll, we'll speed this up, sorry. Uh, this, there's, a, there's a lot in this one. Um, the majority of time that you present an offer will probably be not in person, right? If you can get in person with, with your client, by all means do it. It is, it is the, the best way to present an offer. Um, but for the most part, email is how you're going to present the offer. Um, but you want to you want to call them and explain the offer, right? Don't just blindly send an email and don't explain it and expect them to sign it or not sign it. Um, call them, explain explain the offer to them, let them make the decision, and 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 go from there. So once you guys have an offer that is accepted, you guys are in escrow. Right. And that's that's when you guys are emailing the attorneys. Um, that's when you guys are, you know, updating all your paper paperwork in the sky slope, right? The the under contract, the offer to purchase, your disclosures, right? Um, so understand that when you have a client, you want to be in sky slope and you want to, you know, add them as a client. And then once you're under contract, you want to create a, a transaction, right? So uh, if you haven't done that before, go into Skyslope today and create a transaction and get used to playing around with that. And you'll see a list of, of paperwork that you guys need to, to upload, right? Um, from, from experience, again, <laughs> um, I am not, I'm not the greatest with paperwork. I, that, is, that is my weakness. Um, stay on top of that stuff. So um, as, you, as you guys open escrow, start, start filling out. And, and, and Skyslope is so great because it tells you what has to be done, right? So start uploading everything that you can, right? Um, it's very easy to forget to have your buyer sign those disclosures, right? The, the property disclosures, the oil, mineral, gas, uh, the lead paint, do that with the offer and upload that right away. Um, wiring instructions for the attorney, right? Once you, once you, Again, the, the buyer, we talked about this last week, the, the buyer is the one that, that picks out the attorney, right? Um, so once you guys are under contract, send a nice email over to the attorney. Hey, we just got under contract. I'm representing the buyer. Um, the, the attorney will sit on it for a day or two, typically, and then they'll start asking for information. They'll ask for the seller's information. They'll ask for the buyer's information. They'll ask for the commissions, uh, for the agents. Make sure they have our wiring instructions. If they don't, then ask them how we can send them over. Um, a lot of times we can just email the wiring instructions over, but some people don't want that, but guess what happens if you don't send up, if they don't have our wiring instructions and the deal closes, that money just sits there. <coughs> you guys want to get paid, right? The day that it closes, right? Um, so make sure that attorney has our wiring instructions. Um, and then ask your buyer how, well, your buyer's not getting paid. Uh, the seller is. Um, Ryan. Yes. I have a quick question. I'm so sorry for interrupting, by the way. Uh, so all the forms that has, uh, have to be signed, we can find them in the Skyslope Sky app? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. So when you create a transaction in SkySoap, it's literally going to ask you for the MLS sheet. It's going to ask you for all those disclosures. It's going to ask you for the um, page 16, which is means that uh, they've received due diligence funds. It's going to ask you for the pre-approval. It's going to ask you for comps. It's going to ask you just, just a whole list of stuff um, that you guys are going to need to have. And then the last thing that you'll do the day that it closes is the attorney will send over the final settlement statement, the HUD, um, that both parties have signed. Um, and that's kind of the last thing that you'll upload. And then there's a, uh, a page in there that you guys upload for your commission to, to get paid. So all, all that stuff is, is right in, in Skyslope. And it will, it will guide you through that transaction. But the, the second you get under contract, start that transaction. Um, a, so we have eyes on it too, right? So when you start that transaction, Amanda, Amanda sees that there's an active transaction um, and, and, you know, she can help you out with it as well. Um, but if you wait till the very end and you haven't created a transaction, you're, you're going to have a hard time finding all that, that those documents. Um, and what you don't want to do is have to have call the listing agent and say, Hey, I never, I never got page 16 signed. Can you sign it? Um, they might, she might not be at a, you know, she might be at the beach. She has got a $15,000 paycheck. You know, she might not, she might not care anymore. Um, cause you got, you should, you should have done that before. You might have to go to the attorney and say, Hey, like, did you guys get the escrow money? Um, I, I was supposed to ask you for page 16 to be signed. Um, so you don't, you don't want to be scrambling around, but yeah, the sky still has everything in there. Um, and, and, and in order of when you need to do it. Um, so, um, it definitely doesn't hurt for you to guys go in there and put, go put your home address in there and create a transaction, a fake transaction and start that transaction. And it, you'll see all the different steps um that it wants you to take thank you Misha you got something I see you smiling are you talking to someone else okay did you call my name Brian who said that Um, last minute lender docs, um, arrange your, doc, your buyers to preview loan documents in advance. Um, so your, your buyers will get a, a CD, um, closing disclosure and they'll get the, the, the loan paperwork, paperwork three days before closing, at least, um, it has to be, they, they have to have three full days to look at their loan docs before closing. So if that lender doesn't send over those those final those final numbers until the day of closing or the day before closing, you're you're not going to close, right? So you need to make sure the lender is sending those documents over in advance. Um, because by by law, they need three days to review. Um, escrow instructions: um, schedule and attend closing with your client. Um, on the buying side, we're, we're typically always going to be there for our clients. Um, on the listing side, I don't always go with my client because um, it's, it's not as is not as much involved. Um, but on the buying side, especially in the beginning, um, especially if you guys are new agents, there's really there's really no reason you guys would not go to closing. Um, and closing is usually very. I mean, it's usually ten minutes, right? You sit at the attorney's table. They've got they. The attorneys are very organized. They're gonna have everything ready to go, and it's just bam, bam, bam. They're gonna explain it as they go, um, and a lot of times it's a ten-minute process. Um, go right. The, the more closings you have under your belt, especially in the beginning, the, the better it's gonna be. The, the better it's gonna be for you explaining to the next client how how closing goes. And it's also a good way for you to end things. And like, I, I appreciate working with you. You know, take a picture of them. Um, Share it on your social media and ask them for referrals, of course. Uh, but going going is a great way to end the process, right? If you don't show up, sometimes they just feel like, you know, they only saw you the first time they showed the house, then everything else has just been phone calls, texts, and emails. Um, seeing them in person, that that final closing is 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 very nice for for your clients. <clears throat> closing does not happen until both parties have done this. Um, Funds released by the lender and the seller's funds have been received and the deed has been made public, meaning recorded. Um, so you guys will hear that a lot, um, has, has it recorded, right? So once, once it is recorded, it is officially 
officially sold, right? So um, typically funds will not be distributed until that house is recorded. So if you have a closing later in the day, um, typically the, the closing, the shutoff time for recordings is around four, which is also around the same time funds to be wired is kind of cut off is. So if it's late in the afternoon, I understand that there's a good chance that it will be the following morning before that deal is recorded and people are getting paid. Um, so until, you know, if your, your lender has to release that money for the sellers and the sellers have to receive that money before it will close. Um, so the attorney's not going to Um, you'll, you'll see on some closing dates that are in the afternoon that it ends up going to the following day, right? So if you can have things done in the morning, you know, if you've got, if you've got your, your buyers got their moving truck in the parking lot and it's 4.30 in the afternoon and they're expecting keys, let them know that a lot of sellers are not going to hand over the keys until it's officially recorded. And I've seen that happen numerous times. Um, and they're not going to get the keys of that house until it is officially recorded and they've been paid. Um, so know, know that going in, right? Um, if it's your first couple of transactions or this is the first time it's happening for you, get me on the phone, get someone else on the phone and, and try to figure out uh, and talk to that listing agent. Like, hey, like if it doesn't actually record today, but everyone is at least signed, you know, is it cool if we go ahead and get the keys, right? Um, if you ask that in advance, you know, you have a better chance than if you just ask them at five o'clock in the afternoon, um, it's, it's going to be tough on you. Does that make sense? Yes, I have a question. Okay. Do you normally give like um, closing gifts to your clients? Sometimes, yes. Um, it, it, is, it is always a very nice gesture. Um, I, again, on the listing side, um, I normally send, send something to them afterwards. On the buying side, I'm, I'm normally there in person. Um, and it, it, it definitely... It definitely helps, um, you know, whether it's a, a, a bottle of wine or champagne or whether it's, you know, a, a housewarming gift or something that, you know, that they they like. Um, even a shirt that has Realty One Group on it is nice because then they're going to wear it and then people are going to ask them about it. Um, but yeah, a, a gift, a gift, especially on the buying side is 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 definitely nice. But again, um, if you can't do it, especially if it's your first couple of transactions and you can't afford to do it, that it, it's always fine. But it does, it does, it does look good. Um, but again, always, you know, almost every attorney has like, a, one of those like big keys or home sold or something like take a picture with them of that at least, uh, and share that on your social media. Um, yeah, gifts are, gifts are nice. Okay. Thanks. Buyer takes possession of home. I kind of already talked about this, but, um, kind of a range in advance with the listing agent. Like how, how we get the keys. I need the keys. I need the garage doors, gate remotes, et cetera. Um, if you don't ask for this, I mean, you can put yourself in a, in a bad situation where your buyers have spent thousands of dollars on movers that can't be canceled. Um, and, and you didn't find out that the seller's not going to be out of the house until seven o'clock that night and they're not ready to give up position, right? Like you, you need to be in contact with that listing agent days and weeks leading up to it to make sure that's a smooth transaction. Um, and, you know, a lot of times keys are going to come to closing, but also understand during COVID, a lot of times, you know, people are signing remote and they're not coming in person, right? So maybe, maybe the seller is just going to leave the lockbox on the door with a key in it and they'll leave all the remotes on the countertop. And then you can just leave the, the lockbox on the front door and the, the, the listing agent will come by and pick it up, but make, make sure that you have all that stuff figured out in advance. Um, you don't want to wait till the day of closing because it 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 can cause some issues. So, uh, arrange arrange for those keys to be picked up. And there are times that you guys are going to have to go pick them up for your for your buyer, right? Um, just just be prepared to do that. Um, but always always ask in advance how how that transaction is going to happen. Uh, some attorneys don't want to hold keys anymore. So, but that's it, guys. That is it. I know we went uh, a little overboard today, but. Uh, hopefully that was uh, helpful for you guys. Um, I'll I'll open it up to some some questions if you guys have any. Thank you, Brian, for today. Thank you, Brian. Of course. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. All right, guys. Well, we will you, see y'all next week. Okay. Good luck this week.
<laughs> Good luck to you guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye-bye. Thank you. Yeah, man, this is your first first rev up. Glad you glad you made it. Yeah, first rev up. And um, I'm closely working on with the, my mentor, Michelle. Yeah, okay. You've already you've already met with her or meet with her soon? Yeah, I already met with her. Nice, nice. Well, cool, man. Uh, Michelle, Michelle is awesome. Uh, obviously, you're able to, you know, if you need anything from me as well, you're always can always can reach out to me. So glad you're glad you're on here, man. Let's get you, let's get you rocking and rolling. Yes, yes. I'll all shoot right. you all. Uh, questions if i have any yeah yeah you, you can call or text me anytime man that's right nice. just rev up so uh if i don't talk to you before then i'll see you next monday all right see you have a great Later. day